A lot of time has passed, and now we find ourselves in the last period explored in this series, with 200 million years having elapsed since our days. Earth now looks nothing like it did in our time, the maps of life have been redrawn so many times that the animals you will encounter bear no resemblance to their ancestors. Take, for example, this cnidarian that cultivates algae inside its body, they produce a gas that allows this kind of jellyfish to float in the air and provide it with the nutrients it needs. These animals form an entire self-sustaining ecosystem, upon death, the creature leaves its eggs to develop within its carcass, and the decaying algae also leave their seeds on the eggs to colonize the next generations. The giant sandworm is a distant descendant of leeches. This worm has become gigantic, with some individuals exceeding 50 meters in length, making it probably one of the largest land animals of all time. These creatures can also live for several centuries, thanks to a very slow metabolism. They spend most of their time buried in the sand without moving. When they are hungry, they can become formidable predators. They move quickly under the surface of the sand, sensing the vibrations caused by animals moving above. Suddenly, their enormous mouths emerge from nowhere, swallowing prey whole in a matter of seconds before disappearing again. It is rare to see this animal completely exposed in the dunes. For reproduction, males leave gametes under the sand, which can remain dormant for several years until a female happens to pass by and becomes fertilized. With the assembly of nearly all continents, a new Pangaea has formed, resulting in a strong continental climate over much of the landmasses, leading to the aridification of ecosystems. Many animal groups became extinct with this continent reorganization, but many also managed to adapt. Surprisingly, mollusks are among the survivors of these vast deserts. The wheeler snail is evidently a descendant of gastropods, its tentacles no longer extend to avoid drying out, instead, staying close to the body allows them to conserve body water. They no longer produce mucus to move and manage to crawl without it. When the snail retreats into its shell, it can move forward by rolling itself, allowing it to cover large distances quickly while conserving a significant amount of energy. Tozers are also mollusks adapted to the hot and dry climates of these vast deserts. The spotted tozer, in particular, is remarkably fast, it's a predator that pursues its prey until exhaustion. It runs on its six legs, with the first pair of legs no longer used for locomotion but for manipulating objects or prey. It seems to be less intelligent than the cephalopods of the Holocene, living in small groups of five or six individuals. They are entirely independent of aquatic environments, the eggs are laid in moist sand nests that they sculpt themselves with their tentacles. Upon hatching, the young must fend for themselves. These animals are constantly on the move, not territorial at all, and constantly searching for new prey. The geller comes from an isolated branch of terrestrial cephalopods, possessing a unique appearance even among animals of this period. It has retained the six locomotor tentacles of its ancestors, which have become stiffer to ensure better running ability. They have also developed hooves at their tips, an adaptation to the sandy desert terrain, these hooves are broad to prevent sinking into the sand and protect the animal from heat. Similar to the previous cephalopod, the first pair of tentacles no longer serve for locomotion but protect the eyes from sand. They also have scales on their backs to help retain body water. These animals are vegetarian and gregarious, moving in large herds in search of the rare water sources in the arid regions they inhabit. They can run very fast if pursued by predators, reaching speeds of over 75 km per hour. The Talebs resemble their abyssal ancestors, the Pycnogonids. Some species left the ocean several years ago, but only the Talebs have survived until now and have adapted to the arid environment of the deserts of this new Pangaea. However, they are still highly dependent on water. They cultivate algae on their bodies to keep them constantly moist, and their gills are immersed in these symbiotic plants. Originally, these animals had eight legs, but in Talibs, the second pair of legs is used for manipulating objects and feeding. 
They feed on bacterial colonies found in rocky crevices or near water sources, lacking a mouth. Instead, they smear these bacteria onto their algae. The bacteria proliferate within the arthropod's abdominal vegetation and are ingested through the openings in its carapace. For a long time, some spiders have been digging holes lined with their webs to hide inside, and the Pangaea spider utilizes this same technique. However, its hunting strategy has adapted to the arid climate of the deserts in the future. Their web serves to capture moisture that accumulates at night, water droplets are trapped in the narrow mesh and flow down into the spider's dug hole, forming a small water reservoir. This serves as a trap for their prey, thirsty small arthropods are drawn to this moist spot and descend to drink, whereupon the spider can capture them with its long legs. Only females make these holes, males, being much smaller, are also attracted to the female's water sources but only for reproduction before they themselves become prey. The seahors are also terrestrial arthropods, descended from marine arthropods. They are burrowing animals that dig ephemeral tunnels using their two powerful anterior legs shaped like small shovels. These are the only legs they have left, as the rest of their body lacks them, a physiological adaptation that allows them to slide easily through narrow underground passages. They also spend time above ground hunting insects since their prey does not venture into the underground. Their slowness on the ground prevents them from being detected, allowing them to catch their prey before it even realizes anything is amiss. The seahor does not feed on the spot because it is too vulnerable, instead, it quickly returns to its tunnels with its catch to devour it at leisure. The T-bar is one of the most formidable predators of the future deserts, related to ants but having evolved a completely different lifestyle from its ancestors. They have become solitary predators, equipped with long legs that enable them to run very fast. Some specimens can measure over 3 meters long and can attack animals much larger than themselves with their huge mouths equipped with sharp fangs. They are highly territorial and do not hesitate to violently attack their own kind when they encounter them or if they are chasing the same prey. Cannibalism is not uncommon in this species. Reproduction occurs only during a very specific period when T-bars gather for a massive collective orgy. For their survival, they must quickly disperse from the area after mating. With the ambient heat of the Neopangaea continents and the increase in oxygen levels in the air, the growth of arthropods is accelerated, and most of them have become gigantic compared to their sizes during the Mesozoic and Cenozoic eras. The Marana is a prime example of future gigantism, descended from grasshoppers and locusts. Apart from their size, they closely resemble their ancestors. These are large herbivores with powerful jaws capable of grinding all types of vegetation, they live in small communities, with some individuals feeding while others keep watch, scanning the surroundings for any suspicious movements. Their long hind legs still enable them to make great leaps, although proportionally less impressive than before. They are very fast animals, capable of reaching speeds of over 150 km per hour by moving in leaps. Not all arthropods have become gigantic. For example, the chrome ant has a size similar to the ants encountered by humans during their era. These ants live in large colonies, much like their ancestors, but they remain on the surface and no longer construct anthills. They are active in the deserts of what was once Southeast Asia. Their chrome color dazzles predators, making them difficult to see and reflect sunlight and heat, allowing them to roam freely even during the most extreme hours of the day. They attack larger prey in numbers and lay their eggs in the remains of their prey. Thanks to their dazzling defense, they have almost no predators. However, they may occasionally seek shelter in caves, where their reflective carapace perfectly camouflages them against the walls. Here is one of the largest insects of all time, the bugalo. It is a very slow and armored animal, comparable to the ankylosaurs of the Mesozoic or the Glyptodon of the Cenozoic. Their elytra are very sturdy but definitively prevent them from flying. 
Only the juveniles can still fly before their final metamorphosis. They are aggressive herbivores that do not easily succumb to predators, only the largest animals dare to consider them as prey. However, once overturned, these insects are doomed as they cannot right themselves. During mating rituals, males have a protruding head to attract females. Females carry their eggs under their elytra to protect them from the sun and predators. Buhajar is a truly unique insect. They are born in rocky cavities or porous caves where the larva will live for over five years, feeding on small burrowing invertebrates it encounters. During its metamorphosis to become an adult insect, the nymph fuses with a part of the rock, ultimately giving it the appearance of rough rock on its back. These insects are very heavy, and their six legs must be thick to support this weight. They also move very slowly. Small animals often seek shelter in the cavities of their carapace, providing them with some protection while simultaneously cleaning the nooks and crannies of their mount. The terrestrial stars are definitely part of the scenery of the future deserts, having adapted to the harshest environments of this planet, which is no longer familiar to us. Some of them have become very active, like the predatory starfish, which has even developed what could be likened to bipedalism. These animals are blind, but they possess a powerful sensory organ at the front of their bodies, sensing even the slightest air vibration, and they also use echolocation when pursuing prey. Their extendable mouth swallows whole animals, and their armored skin makes them very difficult to defeat. They reproduce sexually and give birth to fully formed and active offspring. They are often found moving in groups of three or four individuals and are quite noisy, producing sounds that can be heard for several kilometers in the desert that was once Australia. The spin starfish is another example of terrestrial stars, but of a more reasonable size. It spends most of its time immobile, lying on the ground, camouflaged within the peculiar vegetation of its habitat. Some corals have also left the marine environment, their calcareous structure protects them from the evaporation of their soft tissues. If disturbed, the terrestrial starfish can stand vertically and literally roll itself up to flee, this is its only means of defense. At the end of each arm, it has small mouths through which it feeds on lichens and the sap of certain plants. It can return to the water to reach new islands, they are solitary but wait until they are numerous enough to return to the water, as their numbers may deter some aquatic predators. The Parasaster is the largest echinoderm of all time, some individuals can grow over 5 meters tall, giving them the appearance of a tree with their greenish color. They no longer move, one of their arms has become a foot firmly anchored to the ground, and only violent sandstorms can dislodge them, a situation that is deadly for them. Surprisingly, they are carnivores, with a mouth full of tentacles under their dome, capable of catching any creatures seeking shelter under their shade. They live in a particularly hot desert, especially in summer when the sun almost never sets at this latitude. Winter, although less bright, is still quite warm, but the parasasters are less active during this season. For reproduction, males release clouds of spores that are captured by females. Once gestation is complete, females disperse the eggs into clouds, a reproductive process that strongly resembles that of trees. The tarf is a very peculiar animal, a relic of what remains of ancient mammals. Their fur has vanished because the intense heat of the deserts is too much for them to bear. Instead, they have naked skin with small, flexible scales, and they no longer produce their own heat. Although they are distant descendants of rodents, they share few common traits with them, except for being viviparous. Tarfs are active and hunt sizable arthropods. Their growth varies greatly depending on the availability of food around them. Adult individuals can range from 30 centimeters to over 3 meters, and there is no sexual dimorphism. They inhabit deserts where the vegetation is dense enough for them to hide from predators or from scorching hot days.
Just like mammals, reptiles have undergone significant changes due to climate change and competition with the emergence of new arthropods. The Reyes lizard is one of the last giants of its kind, they can grow over 3 meters tall and have enormous osteoderms on their backs. They are relatively slow animals that hunt large prey, their powerful beaks can break even the toughest shells. Mating fights between males are extremely violent, with males being three times larger than females. These animals do not drink water, instead, they occasionally consume water-rich plants when thirsty. Vertebrates are on the brink of extinction, as the climate continues to warm up.